If you're anything like me, then when you bought your first bike, you probably didn't pay too much attention to how wide the handlebar was. You're basically given what they give you, and on a small size frame, it tends to be a 42, on a medium size frame, a 44, and on the larger sizes, 46. But we're not all equal, and how do you know that's the right size handlebar for you? Now, the classic method that we've been told is to measure the width of your shoulders and apply that to the handlebars. Uh, but it's kind of, that's one rule that doesn't really fit everybody. And there are some advantages to be gained by moving to a narrower bar. And of course, the most important thing when you're riding is to be comfortable. So that takes precedence over everything else. You need to be comfortable when you're riding. So if you don't feel comfortable riding a wide bar, then go narrower. If you don't feel comfortable riding a narrow bar, then, then go wider. But if you can go narrower by one size, there are advantages to be had there. And it's not necessarily going to be more uncomfortable. It might even be more comfortable. So we'll look at a couple of um, advantages now and see why it is that um, there could be gains to be had. So the big advantage to be had in going narrow is, is aero, basically. And if we look at this image where we're comparing um, the narrow bar, the 40 centimeter narrow bar on the right with a simulated wider bar on the left, approximately 43 centimeters. You can see straight away that the cross-sectional area presented on the left-hand side is that much larger than on the right. And by using the grid method and relating it to a known height, which is the front wheel, we can work out the cross-sectional area of these two images and on the on the left it's 0.23 square meters and on the right 0.215 which is about a seven percent difference now if you're riding at 40 kilometers an hour then that's going to be saving you between eight and ten watts approximately which is quite significant and it's pretty nice to have i mean that's that's free power that's just being handed to you on a plate basically by by having a narrower stance um, so yeah, you know, as long as you're comfortable with, with your arms being in a slightly narrower profile, then it's well worth trying that. And the other advantages which you can accumulate on top are that a narrow bar is going to be slightly lighter than its wider cousin and also slightly stiffer as well uh, because the lever is, is less long and um, you'll find it slightly stiffer. Now, disadvantages, well, there will be those that say, I like a wide bar because it gives me good leverage on I'm out of the saddle, pulling up, and it counteracts the effect of my, of my pedal stroke. Now, there's some truth in that. I mean, the longer the lever, the more torque you're going to have. But bear in mind as well that the longer the lever, the longer the arc it's going to scribe. So, you know, the wider bar that you have, and if you're, if you're pulling up, then it's going to kind of tend to make your upper body rock that bit more because you have that much bit more movement at your hands which will translate into your body. So personally, I prefer having um, a slightly narrow bar, which gives you less oscillation left and right, and it keeps you steadier and smoother in your upper body. And that's how I prefer it, basically. Um, and yeah, you know, I've definitely benefited a lot by going narrower. Uh, this is a 40 centimeter. If they made it in a 38, I would buy it. Uh, but unfortunately, they, they don't yet. So uh, I'll just have to wait. Um, so yeah, you know, give it a try. It's, uh, you can't, uh, you don't stand to lose that much. If you don't like it, then you just go back to your, to the size you had before, but there are definitely gains to be had there. So if you do feel comfortable going down a size, then, then you should try it. Um, one other thing potentially, um, is that a larger bar can give you more precision in steering, but on mountain bikes, that that's important when you're trying to steer around a rock at low speeds, that kind of thing. But on a road bike, really, uh, it's not such a big deal. I mean, it's, um, I don't find it has any detrimental effect on the, on, on the handling of, of the bikes I've, I've ridden. So I think you can um, rest assured on, on that count.